Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Anna Vanilla Arts. I am Anna Vanilla and I am showing you a new hat that I'm knitting for my mother. She has a small head, therefore the um, hat that I'm supposed to knit for her needs to be smaller. So I use smaller size needles and um, less stitches, less loops in total. And so for this uh, pattern, I for this hat, I have um, um, I have cast on. Um, 80 stitches, 80 loops, 80 stitches, and as you can see, the color changes in the beginning. As you can see, the rib stitch it's in fact the same size of colors three colors but the same size same same height so what we need to do is I'll take the needle to show you so I have about three four five five V shapes so five um, front stitches height in high or how to say in um, as high and five stitches here five stitches here five stitches here one stitch one V shape has two rows so it means is ten rows of purple ten rows of green and ten rows of um, blue. The color, the the um, the the yarn, the wool is actually acrylic yarn, and it's a scrap yarn which I can't do anything else apart from doing some sort of um, changing colors and. Um, doing um, short rows I mean as you can see this one in particular really finishes so and here this is a pattern new pattern I'm going to show you how to knit it and it's fantastic it's it looks like front stitches but actually goes this way into the right but it's very lovely, very nice, very tactile. It keeps you warm because it's quite, it becomes like quite a substantial, quite a thick knit. But it's very beautiful, it's very lovely. And also has five V shapes. So it's uh, 10 rows of each color. And I'm going to show you how I've made it. So the size of the needles number four, 80 uh, loops, 80 stitches for the size of my mom's head is just about right. And I'm going to show you in the beginning how to do this rib stitch, which doesn't stretch too much with wear and tear. So let me show you. Showing you how we begin. So we do a slip knot like so. We do like this. One, like this. And then we grab the yarn from the inside. And we 
tighten and we put it onto the needle. And we count, we make 80 stitches. And this is how uh, we count 80 stitches. This is how I do it. I just grab the yarn and rotate it on my finger and then I just grab the yarn like so and release wear it onto the needle like so and as you do this you count each time how many loops you are casting on others are doing like this other knitters do like this. You can use or my technique or this way. It's also as easy and as quick to cast on. I'm going to just cast on about 10 loops or something just to show you the beginning of the hat. But you can cast on as, as um, big the hat as you like because um, if for example you have a head like mine you need to cast on a bit more stitches let's say six stitches more than uh, in in this um, situation of um, this hat that we are doing for my mom so <clears throat> also, I'd like to remind you that I have got more than 30 years experience of knitting, so please don't think that I am very young, I am actually quite mature, um, many people say my voice is young, I look younger, but um, really in years I have experienced a lot of knitting I have done a lot of knitting so please think that I'm experienced enough to show you what I know and how I know and it's my pleasure to share with you my knowledge my experiences my improvements um, in all these years of working with yarn I know crochet I know with um, uh, needles how to work I know even how to work with uh, a needle like nail binding which I'll do a couple of videos in the future of nail binding as well so please um, relax and let's um, knit this hat learn how to knit this hat for my mom Obviously, you you do uh, cast on uh, how many you need, how many stitches you need for your own size of a head. And I am going to just show you how to do the second row. So we take the right needle. We do not need the first loop, and from the inside we knit one loop. From the inside like this from the inside of each loop please don't be surprised that I'm doing this um, uh, tutorial from the beginning beginning and beginning because I am taking in count that um, there are a lot of beginners that might not know this step might not know how to do this um, rib stitch for the hat how to start from zero from nothing to something so you take it from the inside like this so you create like a front stitch it's very easy So, 
and the last loop we always need it as a purl stitch so we do not need the first per the first loop and the last loop we always need with a purl stitch this is like it's like um, a habit you have to develop um, if you want to be a knitter and be able to do a lot this is a rule that I have learned over the years that the first loop is not knitted and the last loop needs to be pearl stitch and in whatever garments you're working on you need to use this um, habit this um, you need to practice this where you do not need the first loop and the last loop you always need with a pearl stitch that's like a rule I've learned um, and um, I use it all the time in whatever things that I create with knitting um, I practice this rule because that's how uh, the knitting always looks in the end more professional okay so I have knitted second row this is the third row so the first loop we do not need as usual we need a purl stitch like this a purl stitch like this you grab it from behind and then you pass a needle through and then this right needle we grab this loop like so so we do not need this loop this is uh, the pattern which um, stops the ribbing the effect of ribbing not to stretch too much over time that's why you do not need one uh, the front stitch you do not need so you need the pearl stitch and then you grab this like so you do not need it so pearl stitch the next one you do not need it the needle has to be behind pearl stitch do not need pearl stitch we do not need pearl stitch we do not need Pearl stitch and so on. Pearl stitch and the last one is always pearl stitch. This is a fourth row. We do not need the first loop, but we need how the stitches are showing us what they are so front stitch we see we need the front stitch pearl stitch we see we need the pearl stitch front stitch pearl stitch front stitch pearl stitch and like this we need until the end of this row and then I show you how to knit fifth row when we need the v-shape the uh, front stitches how we need the front stitches again so the first loop we do not need we need a pearl stitch and then we grab this front stitch from behind like we've done it on the third row in the third row we grab it like this and then we need the pearl stitch and then we grab it like this and release pearl stitch and this one we do not need pearl stitch we do not need pearl stitch we do not need And 
and purl stitch. And we repeat this row and this row which I'm showing you. So we see a front stitch, we need a front stitch. The first loop we do not need, we need the front stitch. We need a pearl stitch, we need a front stitch, we need a pearl stitch, we need a front stitch, we need a pearl stitch. And this is how we need until the end of this row. So, um, the previous row and the last row um, is what you need to repeat in order to receive this effect, this ribbing from this hat that I'm knitting for my mom. So as you can see, you do 10 rows in each color. If you use the same color as mine, the same colors, I've used here three colors and then I repeat them. And each each color I do about 10 rows, 10 rows, five rows on the front of a hat and five rows on the back of a hat. And I do the same when I change the pattern here. So I do also 10 rows, so five rows on the front and five rows on the back. So, um, if you want to knit the hat like mine, like this one, then obviously you need to change your colors. You, you may choose different colors, but you can change from, let's say, every 10 rows or every 5 rows, however you like it. You can just um, knit the way you love it. Uh, the way you want to achieve this hat when you need it and considering for whom you are needing it. So um, we need this, uh, we need the rib stitch so it's, it's then uh, 30 rows of ribbing which I've done here and you can do it in one color. I've done it in three colors, so it's all up to you. So, then I'm going to show you how to start on doing this pattern. This pattern is terrific. It's amazing. It's it's so tactile. It's so fantastic. It's easy to knit. It's it looks just stunning. I think the finished process of this hat will be just fantastic. I, I think it will turn out beautiful. So I'm going to show you how I continue in this color, blue color, and I'll show you how I knit this pattern. It's very easy. Don't be shy from it. This is how this pattern looks on the back. Obviously, you will have to make knots here when you change the colors. So this is how it looks. And I would like to tell you that I knit a lot. I knit every single day because I'm a fanatic. I, I love knitting, I love crocheting, I love anything that's beautiful. So um, I'm trying to record all my pieces that I knit. So if you see a couple of knitting pieces by myself, um, they look similar or something like that. It's just, it happens that I need sometimes in just in, in a different color or different version of the knitting. So don't be surprised if some of the patterns might seem to look the same. But I knit every single day and uh, I'm trying to record every piece that I make 
with you. Hopefully my channel will grow as I help you learn how to do new things, new hats and different hats to others, to other knitters out there. And hopefully you're going to enjoy my stitches, my patterns. So please stay tuned for the next videos as well. So wish me luck. <laughs> um, So let me show you now the pattern um, that I'm doing here on after the ribbing stitch. So the first loop we do not need because we're doing the same color. Only when we change the color we um, knit the first loop with a new color. In this case, we do not change the color, it's the same color here in this row, so we do not need the first loop. Now, we see two front stitches. We need the second loop, like this. We take the front needle and we, we go right through this loop, the second loop. We grab the yarn from behind, we grab it and turn it this way, we hold it with a finger, and then we need the first loop, and only then we release. So, we see two stitches, two loops, two front stitches, we need the first, I mean, sorry, we need the second loop, we grab the yarn through it and then we need the first loop and then we release both loops like this. So the second we grab the yarn through it, we hold it with a thumb and then we need the first loop and only when we release the two like this and this is quite easy to knit so the second loop we need separately and then we need the first loop and we need these loops with a front stitch so everything happens on the front stitch and on the front. So one, so we need the second loop, we hold it with a finger and then we need the first loop and then we release these two loops from the left needle and this is how we knit until the end of this row. As you can see, this pattern is easy enough for beginners. So if you are a beginner, don't shy away from this pattern because this pattern is easy to learn, easy to do. So please try this pattern and you will not regret it. It's so beautiful, so tactile, so amazing. I just love it. And it's stretchy as well, which is good for uh, uh, the pattern to be stretchy for the hat. So now this pattern has four rows. So this stitch has four rows that we need to do, that we need to learn. Um, now we do the second row. So we do not need the first loop and then we need every single loop with purl stitches every single loop with purl 
stitch until the end of this row we need as a purl stitch everything now I would like to change the color to purple so I need to cut the yarn and tie with a purple So I've tied the yarn like easy, you've seen how I've made it, it's very easy to do, I do this with every other colour. So the first loop we need it because we start with a different yarn to make sure the first loop is also new colour. So now this is the third row of the pattern of the stitch so we need the first loop that we see so the first loop we need it um, the second loop we see it as a front stitch we need it as a front stitch one front stitch and then only we need the second loop and then we need the first loop and we release so we need now in the same way the way we needed the first row so the second loop we need and then the first loop and release the second loop we need and then the first loop so the only difference with the third row we need to add one front stitch just one front stitch on the front and then when you knit until the end you have to knit another front stitch at the end and then only you need the pearl stitch which is the last loop so we need the second then the front release second and then the first one release and this is how we need until the end of this row So this is the end of this row and we see that we need to knit one front stitch before last um, stitch for last loop and then last loop we always need it with a pearl stitch and now reverse the, the pattern and we need again so the first loop we do not need and everything else in this row we need it with a pearl stitch every loop is a pearl stitch so fourth row it's only pearl stitches in this row and then we'll do decreases for decreases we always do on the front of the hat and not on the back so just remember this this is important to do it on the front and not on the back uh, also this pattern you can use uh, you can knit uh, anything else 
you wish really um, you can knit sweaters you can knit uh, pullovers cardigans with it it will turn out fantastic I can assure you so now let's do the decreasing so the first loop we do not need and then the first two we need it with a front stitch together so the first two we need it with a front stitch together so we see one two both of them we need together with a front stitch and this is we need until the end of this row now this is the second row of decreases but as I told you the back we never ever decrease only on the front rows so the first loop we do not need then every other loop every loop we need it with a purl stitch and we need it until the end of this row the same way purl stitches Now this is the third row, the front row, we do not need the first loop, but the next two we need together as a front stitch, two together as a front stitch, two together as a front stitch. And we need like this until the end of this row. Now this is the back, the first loop we do not need and all the loops we need it with a purl stitch. I have 21 loops. 21 stitches on the needle so I need it means I need to do one more decreasing so the first loop we do not need and the next two we need them together like so with a front stitch we need them together with a front stitch This is the last time we decrease. The last one and the last one is always a pearl stitch. And this back row we need it with a front uh, with a pearl stitches one by one with the pearl stitches now we take <coughs> we take the yarn and we we measure the size of the hat about three times two three two and a half to three times we cut the yarn and now we take with a right needle we need to the first <coughs> The first loop and the second loop we knit them together and we pull this yarn 
to the end like this and then again two together and we pull the yarn to make sure every loop we do here it's in fact on the yarn not anymore on the needle so that we can make it into a circle and then stitch the hat put the needles to the side we take a bigger needle for knitting for stitching it's especially made for stitching with this needle is especially made for sewing, for sewing pieces uh, like knitting pieces that you do. So we need now to tighten this yarn because on this yarn we've got all these loops. We turn inside out and we tighten and then we make a little knot. To make sure it does not unravel with wear and tear and um, with washing and looking after this hat so we tighten then we reverse it again like so now we see two braids here two braids one that goes like so you see like this and we pick up these braids from this side and from this side you see so we take perpendicular like this one braid pick up the other braid and we kind of take it the middle between one loop and another loop and then we tighten so we take from this side and we tighten with this side and we make sure when we sew um, the sewing is even so that these um, color changes are actually meeting together And we need like we sew like this until the end of this hat so we sew it down to here to here after we sewn the hat as you can see I've done my best to meet with colors so they continue from one side to the other and we slightly stretch the hat to make sure the stitch the sewing is even and slightly stretched so that when my mom for example wears this hat she feels comfortable and it it uh, goes on nicely on her so now we take this this needle and we look at this braid here this braid now we need to follow this braid and 
make a knot here and then hide the yarn through the stitches, through the loops like so like this and then we cut the yarn it's my postman so sorry for this noise for this interruption <laughs> so we hide the yarn in the end we cut it this could be thrown in the bin because it's too short to be used for anything else now this yarn that we started this project we also need to hide it so we hide it for this side of a braid to make sure it is even and nicely done and when the person wears it it's it's all cut so now we need to stretch it slightly to position the hat a little bit so that it could be measured without being blocked so like this as you can see is a lovely little hat it turned out to be very nice this is the decreases we've made look at how beautiful it is and these are the odds and ends which needs to be hidden so what you need to do is just take a um, hook maybe hook bigger than this and hide through the stitches like this through the back from the inside out and they will not be bothered anymore not bother you anymore with being visible when you wear it when you wear this hat so like this If it's too long, then you just cut it shorter. I like to hide it until the end. Then again, this is another odd an end to this yarn to make sure it does not uh, get visible on the front. So. nicely you can hide it through this braid any hook will do for this job I have a bigger hook like this size number 4 which is very good for things like this to be hidden away and this is the finished hat I'll bring my mannequin and we can test it on her and hopefully she loves it <laughs> of course I'm joking but let's have a look at the end process I love how it turned out don't you think so this is how the hat looks on my model here as you can see is it looks beautiful I love it I hope you love it too you love it as much as I do this is the stitch at the back which is nearly unnoticeable 
as you can see it covers the ears my mother has put this hat on and it was suiting her perfectly she loved it and she was like yeah this is my new crazy hat that I'm going to wear with pleasure into town so yeah yesterday she's been into town with this hat with this new hat so as you can see the uh, crown here the decreases look fine look quite well done well made so I hope you like this pattern and you will do a hat like this one why not please share it with me I would be pleased to know you are creating patterns out of and stitches out of my tutorials and we can create beautiful things together with my channel with the help of my channel thank you very much for the lovely comments love you all and please don't forget to put likes and subscribe and you will always get new videos soon i'm going to work on my channel a bit more frequently these days so hopefully you're going to love my new models and things that I do on my channel. So thank you very much for watching. Um, wish you luck with creating beautiful things. Bye.